Well, good evening. We're going to deviate a little bit from James tonight. Uh, as I told you Sunday, I was having a problem with my eye. I still am. It's kind of infected and real irritated, and it's uh, kind of hard for me to see out of it over a long period of time. So I'm just going to look at Second Peter tonight, the third chapter, verses 10 through 18. Uh, you know, we believe the Lord is coming back. How do we stay aware and be ready for his coming? And I think Peter gives us a good uh, lesson here in verses 10 through 18 about that. It says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done uh, in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in the, this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in the keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear brother, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which, he, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forward forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory now, both now and forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for uh, this opportunity to share your word and Lord we know that it won't go out it won't return void and Lord we pray that it will speak to hearts as we look forward to your return and how we can prepare how we can live our life during this time of waiting Lord uh, again just speak to our hearts tonight first in Jesus name we pray amen how do you stay aware and be ready. Well, we're going to look at the word hope, uh, and we're going to do the acrostic of, of hope. And first of all, first of all, you need to heed what you already know. You know, we know a lot as God's children. We know a lot about what is going to take place, and certainly as we look at the the surroundings around us today, we see that uh, the, the the end times seem to be approaching fast with all that's happening in our world. Uh, but he tells us we need to practice what we already know. Uh, you know, we need to find out exactly what we do know, and we are reminded that through the Scripture by repetition. Uh, we That's how we learn. That's how we learn. Jesus taught uh, by repetition. Uh, it's kind of like taking a test. You take a test after you've already gone through some material to see exactly what you know and and you put in that in put that into practice and that's what you do as a Christian you know a lot of things and we just need to put those things in practice that we know uh, Jesus taught by repetition as I said and, and uh, if you ever listen to Billy Graham speak which many of you have I'm sure he talked by repetition. He just basically had one message that God loves you. He died for you. And really, that's the only message we have. And he came to live among us and uh, and then die on a rugged cross and then arose on the third day so that we could have everlasting life. Jesus taught by repetition. As people would come and listen, they would hear 
basically the same message, just like basically what people heard a lot of times with Billy Graham. But it was it's the message of truth. It's a message that will change lives. We need to heed and and play out what we already know as God's people. Live out what we already know. And then we need to open our eyes and our ears. That's what he tells us in verse 17. We need to practice discernment. There's a lot of people today and in the past that have talked about the coming of Christ and done a lot of crazy things, we would say, uh, because they were preparing, but they were really preparing for the wrong uh, reason because what they thought was the coming of Christ was not the coming of Christ at all. They thought they could predict it. And the Bible tells us we don't know when he's coming back. So we have to practice discernment as we wait on the Lord to come back because there's a lot of people trying to to fool us, uh, trying to get us to follow them and their teachings. And it's certainly not the teachings of God. People will lead you astray. They really will. They do it all the time. Uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, uh, the Moonies. Heard a story from J.D. Sumner one time. J.D. Sumner sang bass for the Blackwood Brothers and the Stamps. And uh, he was recorded as the lowest in the Guinness Book of Records. as the lowest bass singer on earth. But uh, J.D. was going through a hotel they were go, going to spend the night in a hotel room and rather than on the bus and as he's going through the the lobby there was a young boy that came up to him and had some flowers and uh he said sir says uh i want you i want to uh, to let you buy these flowers from me and uh, he said he said well what's it going to he said well it's going to jesus and he knew exactly who he was, and J.D. JD knew exactly who he was and what he was doing. He looked at the old boy and, and spoke in his old gravelly voice, you know. And he said, son, how old are you? And the young man said, I'm 20 years old. He said, son, I'm 65 years old. I figure I'll see Jesus before you do, so I'll just take the money to him myself. A lot of people on this earth are out to deceive you and to lead you astray, uh, making money off of this end time. We need to stay aware and be ready by opening our eyes and our ears. And when we know that something's not right, if we know the Word of God, the Holy Spirit will let us know and keep us safe from there. But while we're waiting, we need to pursue a godly lifestyle. That's what he said. In verse 11 and verse 12 says since everything will be destroyed in this way you what kind of people ought you to be you ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and the speed of its coming of his coming so we need to live holy lives is what he says here in this passage of Scripture we need to pursue a godly lifestyle seek Jesus and his will Rather than seeking words and supposedly wisdom from other people, seek God's will in your life. Seek His wisdom for your life. Don't be distracted by those who do not pursue godly lifestyles. And there's a lot of folks that claims to be Christian that's not pursuing godly lifestyle. And then there's a lot of folks that's just living their own life. They have no idea what they're doing because... Uh, they don't know what the Bible says. But uh, as God's people, we need to stay true to what we believe. Again, because people are, are watching us while we're waiting. We need to pursue a godly lifestyle. Hoping some other folks would love to do that as well as they watch us live our lives out as we wait on the Lord. And then the last thing, we need to expect Jesus' to return. That's what he says in verse 13. He says, But in keeping with his promises, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. Looking forward to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, that sense of expectation 
is always held uh, in because with a commitment to be ready to live for Jesus in the present and in the future. We need to expect Jesus' return. We need to look forward to his return. We need to expect him to come because he said he's coming. And again, that's how we stay aware and be ready as we wait for the Lord's return. There's an old saying that says, don't be so heavenly minded that you are no earthly good. Yeah, we have to wait on the Lord and wait for his return, but there's some things we need to be doing. As he says in this passage, we need to pursue a godly lifestyle so people will see Jesus Christ in our life. And then we'll get an opportunity to tell them about the coming of Christ and pray that they won't miss it because they too have accepted the Lord as their Savior. So we need to be aware. We need to be ready because we know the Lord is coming. We need to get as many folks as we can ready because we know the Lord is going to judge people, every person one day. And my prayer is that if you have friends and loved ones, you'll prepare them by getting them ready for the judgment seat of Christ where all believers will come together. And certainly not the great white throne judgment where unbelievers will come together. And the Bible says that they'll be thrown into the lake of fire. That's not the place you want to go. It's not the place you want your friends and loved ones to go. So while we're here, as we're waiting, don't just sit around. Do something that will bring honor and glory to Jesus Christ, and that is to tell the good news of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we are to be uh, ready. We need to stay aware of what's going on. Lord, as we look at what's going on in our world today, it seems like you could come back at any time because uh, according to Scripture, everything's been fulfilled for the to the for the return of Christ, for his call his children home. And Lord, as we look at all the chaos that's happening, certainly that's what the Bible says. It's going to to happen. It's going to get worse and worse. And Lord, just keep us aware of what's going on and help us to live a lifestyle that would bring honor and glory to your name, that we might lead others to a sailing, saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I enjoyed that passage of Scripture. Sorry we had to deviate from James because I just could not read that much at one time. But uh, you pray for me that my eyes will get better. Uh, my eye will get better. And uh, But uh, again, thank you for being with us. Always remember, we love you at View Baptist Church. And look forward to maybe seeing you Sunday morning. You have a blessed night.